The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. And welcome in, everybody, to another episode of Tier Tuesdays here on the High Low Sports Podcast, where we take all 32 NFL teams from the last week and put them in the tiers based on their performance that week, as well as the season as a whole. It is DJ joined, as always, by my co-host, Kelsey. And Kelsey, I'm going to describe we're about 25% through the season. I think it's safe to say this was the good, the bad, and there's definitely a whole lot of ugly this last week. Yeah, uh, I'm not having a good time with this season. That's the safe, <laughs> the best way to put this. Uh, my predictions for, for for division winners are basically out the door in some of these divisions. So, <laughs> yeah, at this point in time, I mean, a quarter of the way through the season, this is these are starting to see trends, and, and these trends are – are probably going to continue throughout the season for some of these teams. And that does not bode well for any of my picks. Let's just say that. It has been up, down, and everything's left to right. And we're going to go and jump right into it. We're going to break. We're going to crack open the tiers list right now. And here's where we are starting. I'm going to work my way from the bottom to the top. Kelsey, here's what we got. At the bottom, you're cratering for Caleb. It's let's the race to the number one pick. Got the Cardinals, the Raiders, the newly additioned Patriots in here, in spite of after that last game against your Cowboys. And the New York football giants who have scored a combined three points in two two games. And if you take away two quarters against Arizona, they've been getting crushed 99 to nothing, basically. So they stink. The next year we have, bro, what happened? Either a team that, that just had a, what the heck happened? The Bears, that choke job against the Broncos. The Bengals, just what happened to you this season in general? The Saints, like, what happened? How did Chris Olave get one ball for four yards? Like, that, what's going on there? And the Steelers, a team with what? How did you against fourth string offensive linemen against the Texans and you couldn't hit CJ Stroud? What? Next, we got just bad teams, even if they did okay. Denver, you got your win. Congrats, but you still gave up 70. We didn't just forget. Like, we remember. The North remembers. So does the South, West, and East. Panthers and Carolina, they played each other. Vikings came out on top, but uh, neither team's really lighting the world on fire right now. Not frisky teams. The Jets, a competitive game against the Chiefs, but I think that's, we'll see. They've still got some work to do. The Packers, a rough one against the Lions, made it interesting late, but still not not too. I think the NFC, there's there's still a couple of tiers below some of the NFC's best. The Titans are absolutely ramrodding the Bengals, which this kind of said more about the Bengals than it did for the Titans me, but they're in a four-way tie for the AFC South, so they can't be too far at the bottom. Then the Falcons, they can't throw the ball. They can they cannot in- integrate the four pass to save their life against anybody. I don't know if it's Desmond Ritter, I don't know if it's Arthur Smith, I don't know if it's both. Next, we got Frisky AF. These teams are going to put these teams are whether they're a playoff team or they're well out of it, they're going to be a bit thorn for a lot of teams. We got the Colts and the Rams who had an overtime thriller, a tale of two halves, if you will. 23 0 first for the Rams, 23 0 Colts in the second half. So, absolutely fun teams. And then Houston, led by CJ Stroud, who's playing as good as any rookie quarterback in recent memory, plus good receivers, Tank Dell, Damian Pierce at running back. Their offensive line is not even healthy yet. Tamiko Ryan's has them rolling. Still pretty good. These are good teams regardless of what happened. The Browns, you had a fifth round rookie quarterback, not only starting his first game against the Ravens, but you decided to, but you didn't find out he was starting until about five hours before, five to ten minutes beforehand, basically. He got the Justin Herbert treatment, but without being Justin Herbert. So that defense is still good. The 20 to three, I won't hold too much against him. Tampa Bay already has as many total wins as we basically had them in the preseason. So looks like everything we kind of joked about, about how they could be good, they've actually took that and are running away with it. Chargers, a weirdly close win against the Raiders. Justin Herbert's left hand turned to Swiss cheese, but they still pull out the W. The Commanders, razor close with the Eagles. Could have gone either way. They're going to be a force for I think they're still in, a, in the playoff hunt. And Jacksonville, able to going back and getting a home game in London and able to right the ship as well in front of their fans. Next, we got the Jedi Knights of the group. These are just a tier below the favorites. Your Dallas Cowboys, Miami Dolphins with a rough week. The Detroit Lions still going to be up there. Baltimore Ravens leading that tough AFC North and the Seattle Seahawks three, a, a quiet three game winning streak. And then the favorites. No, not really a surprise here. Chiefs, Eagles, 49ers remain there, but the bills it with that win over the dolphins and the impressive way they did it. I think it, I have climbed them into up one step higher on the mountain to join the elite of the elites at the top. So Kelsey dismantle, dis, disagree, destroy, disseminate, whatever you need to do. Let us know where, where we're going here. Uh, let's start with the Cowboys. Jedi Knights, I think not. Um, pretty good still, though, yes, because at the end of the day, you went against the Patriots, who you beat. Um, you shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't have lost to the Cardinals, but you did. You've also what, beaten the Giants, and who was the third team, fourth team they beat? Jets. Jets. Okay, so you've beaten four or three of the four worst teams 
and you've lost to said fourth tour team. Uh, so at this point in time, the Cowboys, I'm I'm not putting a Jedi Knights yet. I'm still thinking they're pretty good, but you haven't proved anything to me yet. I don't see anything being proven other than the fact you beat teams that are down on their luck right now. You beat a team that lost Christian Gonzalez, lost Matthew Judon during the game. You beat a Daniel Jones who, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. It's, it's safe to say that man might be the most, most overpaid person in America right now. Um, and that's being nice. And you beat the Jets. And let's just be completely honest about that. You beat Zach Wilson and the Jets. Not Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. And not this Zach Wilson that we saw this Sunday and the Jets. You saw you, you Sam Darnold version of, of Zach Wilson. So, yeah, the, the Cowboys, I'm not sold on being Jedi Knights. Not yet. They're, they are good. They're 3-1. and one. I mean, hey, pretty good still. Uh, but you know what? It's not. To me, I look at the rest of that group, and I think these guys are a step above. The Cowboys, honestly, you put the Eagles in front of them, they're going to lose. You put the Rams in front of them, I think they're going to lose. You take the Vikings, I'm, I'm thinking they're going to lose. And that's because their defense, I don't know what their defense is showing up, what defense is showing up every night because I don't know the competition they're playing because like, like when they play bad competition, they show up for the most part, three out of four times they show up. But what happens when you pay good competition for the first time? I I'm, I'm yet to be sold on the Cowboys at this point in time. And, and so therefore I'm, I, I don't like them as Jedi Knights. I will say that you can only, you can't control who you play necessarily. The giants, they should, were supposed to be a good team. And those three games they've won, they've won by a combined like 120 to 16. So they've done it, what they need to do in three F. I'll cut, we'll go with the conference. We'll put them at the back end of Jedi Knight. So like they just got the break cut off. Like they they're just a notch above those teams because you you scored a hundred points in those three W's. Some of these teams that are up here haven't scored a hundred points in all four games combined. That's fair. I mean, that's a fair assessment. I just they play the 49ers. It's, it's hard when you when you're it, playing it was 40 to zero to the 49ers. We will drop them down into not frisky. Like we will drop them four yeah, teams like, if we get crushed by the 49ers. I just I'm I'm honestly thinking this this game against the Niners is going to just be absolutely dismantling for the Cowboys. I think it's whatever ego this team has going forward, which you you kind you need an ego to be successful in the NFL. There's nothing wrong with that. I just think that you're going to lose all the momentum you have if you, against this Niners team, who is just right now, I think it's red hot as they come. Um, no pun intended, since they wear red jerseys. But yeah, I, I, you know, I, I just I don't know. I worry about the Cowboys. Obviously, as a Cowboys fan, probably I'm a little more sensitive to, to to being worrisome about them um but yeah i just i don't know it just doesn't feel right yet to have them up there uh just because they haven't played anybody i mean right now just they, they haven't played they anybody. do lose to the 49ers and lose badly like we're talking like a 30 to 30 or like what they've been doing these bad teams we might be moving them to a very low tier and we'll have a se- special segment tier tuesdays called what where you could just yeah. kind of rail into the cows and be like i told you they are who we thought they were and then They'll get their own category next week if they get lambasted. I mean, look, I, I I think this. I think they're a great wild card team this year in the NFC. I'm just not sold on them being even potential division winners right, right now. I mean, I just really am not. On the flip side of that, I, I'm going to move on from the Cowboys here, and I'm going to go straight to the Washington Commanders. I think pretty good still is a great place for these Commanders. I mean, when they're offensively clicking, when Sam Howell's on it, when that run game is going, and that defensive line, when they are getting after people, it is a deadly show. And really, you can just start with the defensive line. When that defensive line gets going, that team is nigh unstoppable. I mean, it is it, it is a it's it's the gear that gets the engine going, really. I mean, if you look at a car engine, you have a starter and an ignition switch, they're the ignition switch. Like <laughs> as soon as as soon as they're after the quarterback, it's over. I mean, really. Like you, good luck trying to trying to keep up with that team at that point in time because then you can just start getting you just start putting your foot on the throat and just start running, 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 throwing at Terry McLaurin. Throwing to Jahan Dotson, you know, all these guys just keep getting open in the receiving receiving level. Yeah, Sam Howell is Sam Howell. We still aren't sold completely on him. We think he's should be pretty good this year. But I mean, three out of four games have been pretty good. Um, so yeah, it's I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll wait and see. But I do like I do like the Commanders here pretty good still. Um, I didn't even move them in front of. Their biggest fault in that game was putting a 145-pound Emmanuel Forbes on 220-pound AJ Brown one-on-one all game. Like that was their biggest fault. If they don't do that, who knows? Yeah, and, and I, I mean, I'd, I'd be honest. I think the Commanders might even deserve to be ahead of the the Browns right now. 
I think as far as these this tier goes, I think they're up there. Um, I think the Browns, yeah, I mean, you talked about Deshaun not playing. That obviously hurts their offense. Um, but I don't know how much it – when you were going to run the ball 60% of the time anyways, and so you run the ball 70% of the time and you still only get three, 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 three points, that's concerning because you didn't – completely overhaul your game plan it's not like you just shut it down and didn't kevin Stefanski still ran the play action passes he still ran the ball 60 plus percent of the time and he still ran the ball in you know in certain situations where he's always going to run the ball um which doesn't which makes you scratch your head the defense on the other hand gave up 28 points to ryan Tannehill and derrick henry um, they, played, they played the ravens this week oh sorry the ravens yeah oh yeah no, no, that's right they played lamar god yeah, and Lamar was Lamarvelous. That is. I'm why on the. I'm on the. I'm on the other bandwagon where I'm already ready to tear into, to the team that let, that gave up 28 points to the Titans. Well, you know um, we can jump right head on into that one. You you led the way. We get we we agree on the Browns too. Like, I want to hear this next one because I think you're sticking at Ohio for this next railroad. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm gonna skip all the way. Yeah, just skip all the way down to the Bengals because this is this is bothersome. Joe Joe Burr, Joe Cool, Joe Shiesty, highest paid quarterback in the league, not named Patrick Mahomes. Um. Yeah, where, where where are you at, buddy? Uh, where uh, you can't blame the calf on this one. I'm sorry, like you can't blame the calf on this. You can't blame your offensive line on this. You can't blame. There were passes in there that he was clean in the game, and he just airmailed passes. I have not seen this Joe Burrow since. I mean, maybe the early days of Ohio State. This was ugly. Ugly. Um. There, but then I mean, it's not just Joe Burrow. I'm just using him as an example right now. But. Jamar Chase, where are you at? I mean, you want to be a number one receiver in the league. You're most people's number one draft pick or number two draft pick in fantasy football. Where are you at? I mean, that's that's awful. Uh, T. Higgins is getting open. He's not getting targeted. He's getting three targets a game, which is never good. Joe Mixon, I mean, this point in time, just go back to Oklahoma and, and go spend your time in restaurants. You know, I guess your straight left needs a little more work. I, I, I don't. It's ugly. It is an ugly situation in, in, in Cincinnati, and I don't think it's getting any better. And I think they're reeling a lot from losing Jesse Bates and losing some of these things in this in this defense that they kind of just were okay with. But now it's – I think you see the impact of losing some of these talent, talented players they've lost, and it makes you a little worried for what's about to happen with the T. Higgins situation. If they lose him, obviously, well – Crap, we see how good this offense is right now, which is not very good. So, you know, uh makes you makes you wonder. So yeah, Cincinnati Bengals, bro, what happened is is a absolute perfect place. And and if it wasn't for the fact that the Steelers and Saints are inept, I'd say put them behind those guys, but right now, uh, this is this is fair. Um, I will say too, at this point, Joe Burrow's clearly not healthy. He's a one read, and if it's not there, he's useless basically because he can't move, he can't extend plays, they can't block, he can't drive off that. Just inactivate it the whole year, tank the season, trade T. Higgins for a pick, and draft Martin Harrison Jr. when you're picking like third in the draft or something like that. It's what you do at this point. Get a top five pick and take a receiver. Like, why Why not at this point? Really, why is Joe Burrow even out there in this game? Should have really? been out for the first three weeks. We talked about this a month ago. Yeah, we talked about the, the fact that you just don't play him. He's your franchise guy. You don't play him when it's a soft tissue injury like this. It's concerning because if you do – bring him back and he re-injures it, re-aggravates it. It's a non-stop injury at that point in time. It will never go away. Like not until he sits for four to six weeks will it go away. You don't get at this point in time, that's football. Yeah. At this point in time, you're you're done until week 10. Like realistically, if Joe if Joe Burrows it gets healthy, is going to get healthy, he's done until week 10 right now. You already screwed the poots on this if you're the Bengals. So yeah, this is an awful situation. Um you know there's a couple more teams I could probably drag down a little bit like i'm looking at the, the falcons i don't think they're not frisky i think they're just straight up bad like b john robinson is good their defense i mean has good points but desmond ritter is literally a black hole like at this point in time you you have so many better quarterbacks that are backups in the league i would encourage you to go get a 37 year old or 35 year old colin kaepernick over J- desmond ritter at this point in time i is, this is an absolute catastrophe happening in, in atlanta I can't blame Arthur Smith because he's calling plays for Kyle Pitts to get open. Kyle Pitts is there's a video of Kyle Pitts getting open on seven different routes and literally waving his arms in the air like he just don't care and and getting completely ignored uh, by Desmond Ritter. It's not a good situation in Atlanta, and it, I don't know if it's going to get better. 
I know there's a lot to be said about going to London and that how that treats for rookies and or young players, but forget that. Get that throw that out the window. Uh the Falcons to me are just not frisky. They're they're not even not frisky. They're just straight bad. Hear me out on this one too. Do you remember when they took Kyle Pitts, what everyone was saying? Who they should have taken? Justin Fields. Everyone was saying you got to get mad at Brian's predecessor. If the Bears continue this trajectory and the Falcons still kind of stay in that middle ground in the NFC South, they should make a phone call and be like, you know what? Desmond Ritter for Justin Fields, we'll throw in a second or something like that. Go get put yourself with Fields with these big targets and a, the run game that Arthur Smith's going to use and utilizing his legs. I'm just saying everybody could win there. The Bears could reset the clock. Go get Caleb Drake, whoever they want at that point, and ruin their career because that's what the Bears do. But if you're the Falcons, you get a chance to get that dynamic quarterback with all of these weapons, with that really good offensive line, too. It's a underratedly good offensive line. And Arthur Smith, who, yeah. look what he did with Ryan Tannehill, Justin Fields can be Ryan Tannehill. Like, they, they they can figure something out there. So I'm just saying they should maybe make that call if Chicago ends up like 0-6 or something like that. But like, hey, what do you say? And if Desmond Ritter continues to struggle with the forward pass part of the whole playing quarterback position. Yeah, it, I mean, it's it really is like 1945 again, and then, like, no forward pass exists here. <laughs> he gets Newt Rockney's uh, old school Notre Dame teams would be in love with watching the Falcons. It's like, oh, what is the forward pass? We don't know either. Let's go. Um, so I will I say if, if Justin Fields played like he did against the Broncos this last week, but with the Falcons, they're winning that game by two touchdowns. They are going to run the you know what out of that ball. And if the opponent starts to get close, he's able to throw it straight into the sky to Kyle Pitts or Drake London. He's capable of doing that for all of Justin's faults. He is capable of throwing it straight to the sky to let somebody dunk on someone. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I, I do have one final negative here, uh, and it's just really I just want to bash on this. Actually, there's two final negatives. I just really just want to bash on this situation here. Uh, the Steelers, Matt Canada came out and said that this team is not built to ever come from behind. Any deficit. Any deficit. Your offensive coordinator says you can't come back from any deficit. And that's like three points, man. We're talking a one-point deficit. We're talking... You just need a point, and your your team's not built to go get thirty yards and get a field goal. What what is what is an offensive coordinator for if they're going to say that about their own offense? Um, so not only is that bro, what happened? That, that's potentially just blaspheme, blasphemous, and downright disrespectful to your own team. That might be in its own category for for the Steelers if they keep this up for every every week. Like this is awful. Uh, this is getting worse and worse in in the Still City. So uh, Matt Cannon, I don't know what he's doing. Um, with his offense, because I don't even think he knows what he's doing with his offense. If I had another uh, tour, the last, I, would, I would put, I put something in there like the second worst country in North America or something like that for him. Yeah. I, we'll give him another tier and we're going to find out because Kenny Pickett's banged up too. So we'll, we're going to learn a lot. I don't think he'll be able to just use that as an excuse. So we'll see what, when Mitch comes in. Yeah. And that's, I mean, like, like I said, like it, well, this team and, and Mike Tomlin can s- somehow save a winning record out of this. I, I'll be shocked. Uh, but the last negative, I, I got to go straight to those giants, man. <sighs> Brian dabbled to the point where he is pulling out the iPad, shoving it in Daniel Jones's face and saying, look at this play and tell me what you see. Oh, that's a blitzing linebacker. That's a blitzing linebacker. And you let him go free and then just throws the iPad, throws his hands up in the air and walks away from a $150 million quarterback. Is that right? $150 million? What's our $160 million quarterback when you didn't pay Saquad? But you're gonna pay Daniel Jones that money. Do you do you regret your decision yet, New York? Moras, do you regret your decision? Just a just a team see bit yet? Because Brian Dabble regrets your decision. Brian Dabble's assistant regrets his decision to work for Brian Dabble, knowing he has Daniel Jones as his quarterback. That iPad regrets his decision for ever being made. And Daniel Jones is probably just sitting there like, ha. I don't care. I'm getting paid 160 million dollars. Like, I, I really, that, like the look on Daniel Jones' face was just sheer. Like, what, what does it matter to me? It didn't look like a guy who has been beaten up and taken ten sacks, taken record number of hits this year, which is a whole nother conversation. I don't know where his right tackle is, but uh, somewhere back in Alabama, it looks like. And Evan Neal, I don't. It's a, it's a, it's a shame. It's, it is an absolute shame to see the Giants performing as bad as they are right now, because like you just. Parody is one of my favorite things in sports, and right now the New York Giants are the furthest thing from ever causing parody in 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 the East. They are. It is just. Oh man, it is just absolutely awful. And people are like, "Oh, but you're you're an NFC East fan, of course." No, no, it's not like that. I literally just want to see parody. It's just it is just not like parody O D Y like parody 
P-A-R-I-T-Y. As in an ever-changing, ever-evolving situation where you don't know the outcome because everybody has a chance. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see the comedic parodies, you you know. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here for excitement. I'm here for adventure. I'm here for something fun. Which takes me to my positives. I do, I do have I do actually have some positives out of this week. Um, I, I've pretty much beaten up every team on this board at least once uh this season. Zach Wilson, I gotta say, not frisky. He is getting kind of frisky though. Give him one more week of playing like that, then mm. I do have to say that man might be putting him playing that team into a frisky situation because not only was he playing well, but he had the support of his team. There were a couple obviously missed passes. He had Randall Cobb open on a couple short yarded situations to get Phil Go going into half and, and a couple other things. But it was the first time we've seen Zach Wilson look like BYU Zach Wilson in the NFL. And that was that was encouraging. Um beyond that though, the Jaguars, man. I it's it's it seems like a joke, right? That the Jaguars go to London and they learn how to win. <laughs> But, man, I swear to God, these Jaguars go to London and they learn how to win. And not only did they learn how to win, they have back-to-back home games in London. Back-to-back dubs, it sounds like. The Bills are coming into into town, into, into ye old London Bridge, if you will. They're coming into Wembley, and they're about to play the Jaguars this week. And We're getting back-to-back 9.30 kickoffs. And I'm excited because I actually want to see a competitive Jaguars team, which who would have thought 9.30 a.m. Eastern time is when the Jaguars are competitive. It doesn't make sense to me, but hey, whatever they're cooking in Jacksonville, they must love that home cooked breakfast. I mean, it's it's fun, it's exciting, and it, this is the best for some reason the best we see this team play all all year really consistently, other than game one. Um, and and I don't know, that's kind of exciting. I want to see what they're going to do against the Bills coming into London, um, considering that realistically the Jaguars are London's hometown team. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for this one. I, I I'm, I'm curious to see. But I will say, if the Jaguars can pull that off, I do think they fix a lot of their problems for the season just naturally through victories because you can't – you beat a team like the Bills. Yeah, sure, you beat them in a gimmick in, in London, some, pe- some people will say, but who cares? You beat the Bills. Uh, that's a that's That cures a lot of L's, if you will. So uh, that's my other positive is, like, looking at that team. There's some hope there in, the, in, in Jaguar land and Jacksonville and, and Duval. And it's not just in the fact that they might finally get rid of that stadium eventually. Maybe put in things. elevators. You know, things are, the good news is for them, despite all things, they're in a four-way tie for the AFC South because everyone's two and yeah. two at this point. And they're sitting at third, I believe, technically via the tiebreakers. Like, they're just fine, especially when they were supposed to be the runaway favorites. So we'll definitely see. Oh, I, do, I, guess, I, guess, I guess I'll I, I do have one more one more positive. Uh, Anthony Richardson is an absolute freak, and that's all I'm going to say about that conversation. He defies logic, human, and science for the better and for worse. But – that this is what we have for this week's Tier Tuesdays. Let us know in the comment section down below what we got right, what we got wrong, and what you think is just downright blasphemous. We appreciate y'all for joining us. We will see you all again next time.